Hi, today I'd like to show you my loose painting style. When I was doing the bird tutorial in one of my other videos, I thought, oh, that looks like a Quentin Blake style bird. So I thought, well, let's do a video on um, Quentin Blake style. So I don't claim to be Quentin Blake. I'm certainly not Quentin Blake, but I do like love his work. And I'm just going to show you the way I loosely paint which can create a similar sort of effect. So very often when I watercolour, I will paint first and then ink on top. Whereas Quentin Blake, he always inks first with a waterproof ink and dip pens with a nib of some sort, and then he will watercolour afterwards. But I most often use a fine marker pen at the end to add my ink details. On your watercolour palette get some nice bright fresh colours and I like to just start adding the colour very loosely. If you want to do a figure, a person or an animal then get a picture of one in front of you as a reference and a starting point and then go from there really. Try and make it a bit more expressive. Quinton Blake's style tends to be long limbs, sharp features quite a bit quirky and so you can add some of those in if that's the way you would like yours to be too. Quentin Blake actually sets out his drawing and then he will use a light box to do the final sketch on watercolour over the top and he'll do a sketch and colour in that way. Whereas for me, I like to get this loose free illustration um, by letting the colour and the brush really guide me and influence me and then that will influence where the ink needs to be afterwards and I like that free flowing loose way of working really because I feel that you know the flow in motion more of the paint can just lead you a bit a bit more expressive than maybe sometimes just the pen and ink is. Not always the way, but um, quite often um, when I do watercolour I like to do it this way so it's not very controlled and then it's nice and free. Now that I've added the colour and I've let it dry completely, I'm going in with my fine line permanent pen and just adding the details, just going around loosely where the paint is um, not following the lines, just letting another line get created by the pen. And that just gives the eye and the viewer a bit more chance to imagine what the picture, what the fairy tale is going to be, without it being absolutely definite. we can conjure up those other little bits in our mind. Just like here, I'm adding the hair in. It's not perfect, it's just loose, whippy lines. And that's how it goes. I add a little bow in here, and it just sort of starts to come to life. It really does come to life. Just experiment a lot and just see how, how you find it, really. So there we go, that's the first one almost complete. I just need to add a little bit more colour, just adding in a few bolder lines there so that the face really pops out a little more. I could have used perhaps um, a thicker pen here, I've got a very ultra fine line, so I could have used a thicker one. So I'll go on and the next one we're going to do a little dog Oh, that's um, a Quentin Blake one and then I'll show you the bird that I did that I felt had that sort of quirky Quentin Blake style that led me on to do this video. So please do let me know what you think in the comments 
as I say, I am not Quentin Blake, and I think you can pretty much hear that <laughs> from me, but um, here I'm just adding a few more um, bits of shadow, bits of detail in, just to finish it off, and I think it looks really quite cute. You could turn it into a birthday card, write happy birthday underneath, or anything, really. Try not to add too many extra details at the end, just a little bit because otherwise you can get too carried away and it can become a bit too controlled then. Just add some extra little flashes of colour if you need to. On to the little dog. So remember, long limbs, long pointy features, nice sort of free movements and we're going to create the dog in this same way. So there's his face and some ears. Don't need many colours for this, you could do it in any colour at all uh, for a little dog. It doesn't have to be realistic at all. I've got a nice sort of ochre caramel colour here and I'm just adding the colour in and then some little washes of colour as well. So then here come his long limbs, his long paws at the front. Some little paws in there. And then if we move on to his back leg, because he's sitting down, and then add a tail in here, a nice wispy tail. So we'll add the colour in again, I'll let it dry fully, and then I'll go in with my fine line ink and give him his real character. They really start to come to life then. Just added a bit of the black in for his nose, but I should have added that in when when it had dried really, because it, it's um, going to bleed in a bit too much there, but not to worry, we'll just work with it. Add in a bit more colour and then add another wash of water in just to let it bleed in together. And then we'll let it dry in a moment. The watercolour is now fully dry and I've got my ink, my ink pen. You can use anything at all. If you don't have an ink pen, you can use pencil, a nice soft pencil. You could use some colouring crayons, anything really. You can just give it a go. A nice mixed media will work well. Um, anything at all really. I need to remember to get a new pen for my next one. It's starting to run out a little this one at this stage. need to go and get a new batch of permanent pens. So here we just add in the detail in, giving a little extra not always following what the watercolour paint has done, but also sometimes using that as a guide. So, because he's a dog and he's fluffy, you can do nice jaggedy, jaggedy lines to sort of emphasise the fact that he's not a solid block, is he? He's fluffy. So you can do some um, jaggedy lines so it looks like the fluff. And in here, I've forgotten to do his back leg, so we just add that one in there. And it really doesn't matter, because look, you just add it in, and nobody will ever know that you ever forgot it. <laughs> so just add some details. His tail looks a little like it needs to be a bit bigger and bushier, so just that extra line there just creates that bigger, bushier feel. So you've got quite jaggedy ears, so you add those jaggedy bits in with the pen. Again, that ear needs to be slightly fuller, so you can just create, create it slightly larger. And add his eyes in, and now he really comes to life. You can see the little character now. If you're struggling to find where you might begin, find um, a little picture that you do like, and just keep copying it and keep recreating that until you're happy 
with how yours turns out and that's just how you learn and develop so um, just give everything a go and there's the little dog complete so again you could use him on a greetings card or however you like part of another big picture would be wonderful onto the little bird that I created so I didn't have anything in my mind um, to start with I just started off thinking head, body, tail, wing and then just added in anything that I felt like I wanted to with this so I wasn't quite sure how it would turn out until it had finished so it was part of another painting where I did the birds and this one I really particularly liked, it had a really quite nice little character to it so here it is again so I've just added dots of colour, let the colour bleed together and then let it dry for a while and then it keep coming back and adding a bit more detail in until you're ready to let it dry and then we can ink it as I do with my permanent marker A nice bold big wing flying there, a nice big long beak, I think it's the beak that gives it the Quintin Blake feel, that's probably all that it is really. The kind of looseness and the fresh colours and that strong striking beak. So add in any little details you like. With my birds I like to add some little details in like that, give him a quirky little peak on, on his head there, make the eye a little larger, just keep adding some more detail. Then I've just added a few little white gouache highlights there just to give a little bit of extra features, give a little extra dimension. So I'm going to make that beak a little stronger, a little bolder. And as I say, I really need to get a new pen there. So I hope you've enjoyed watching these as much as I've enjoyed painting them and I do hope you give it a go please do give it a go and um, see how you get on and please do let me know how you get on in the comments below and of course I would love a like and a subscribe and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye!